Hi, Julian and Sophie. It's such a pleasure to be sitting down with you guys today. Uh, how have you both been doing this year? Thanks, Grant. Thanks for having us on. Uh, we've had a great year. We've been prepping for this release a lot. I know you've done some other releases too, and so have I. Um, I'm Julian, by the way. This is Sophie. Hi, I'm Sophie. <laughs> Hi, Grant. Um, it's been Hello. good. We're just excited to get this song out. We've been working, you know, on the release for, oh gosh, probably a good year almost at this point. <laughs> you know, putting everything together, the assets, creating the video, um, producing the video, producing the music, writing the song. So it's just exciting to get it out and let it live out in the world. Before we, before we like dive into the song uh, and, and the music video that's, that's also really cool, uh, let's dig a little bit deeper into both of your guys' backstories really quick. Um, Sophie, you know, you have a pretty storied career uh, that's seen you touch on everything from choreography to singing and songwriting. Uh, can you share a little bit about your journey so far? Um, yeah, I always call myself an ADD artist. <laughs> it's like one of those things, you know, there's a squirrel. Okay, I'm going to do that real fast and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do that. So um, in a nutshell, I, I started singing, dancing and acting when I was very, very young and I grew up in Germany and Europe. Um, and I started working in LA about, I want to say 15 years ago. Um, most people know me from Sophie Needs a Ladder, uh, the collab that I had with Dead Mouse. <laughs> 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 Thanks for that dance. Um, yeah, but I've done so many different things, and, and I like dipping my toe in different creative avenues. Um, it's sort of like speaking different languages to me. So um, I want to say up until like a couple years ago, I kind of took a, a little bit of a break from making music, and I was choreographing heavily. Um, I was working on a bunch of shows out of Vegas, um, one of them being Absinthe and coaching other artists and doing choreography for you know people like Avril Lavigne things like that and um, yeah I'm kind of re-inspired now to get back into the groove and make more music so I'm just kind of like riding the wave as it comes I guess I'm a little unfocused in that way <laughs> which could be a bad thing <laughs> yeah. because you know I like doing yeah, so many that... different things but here we are yeah, that, I mean, I, I feel like everybody in the music industry is like fairly, it's not un being unfocused, it's more about, you know, having so many different things going on and, and different skills. Um, you know, Julian, you're, you're kind of a, a story in that. that regard, too, uh, for your origin story. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know me, Grant, I mean, we've done a lot of projects over the years together. I'm kind of in the same boat as Sophie, uh, just a little bit more on the post-production side of things. I love creating videos and and graphics and and show design and and lighting design and things like that and that was what was really exciting about this project especially is i got to use a lot of those things that i've done in the past um i guess a little backstory on me i mean i've i've been doing music for like upwards of 10 years now um through a variety of labels i actually met sophie through dead mouse's label mousetrap uh, that's where we share our, our dna i believe um, I've also been doing YouTube tutorials and YouTube vlogs and that sort of thing since I was like 11 or 12. So there's a lot of that video cur curation DNA in there as well. And I think that that really shines through in some of these newer projects I've been working on. No, it, it's been, it's been really great to see you rise through the ranks. As Thank well. you. I remember, I remember hearing resident try hard years ago. I think that that was your first release on mousetrap, right? Yeah, that was my initial debut is actually originally part of autonomous EP that I put out with them about a year after that. But we decided we wanted to do like a foray, like a, a first song. I think to this day, it might be the only song sampling dead mouse on mousetrap. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, really? I, I, yeah. I don't know how it got through the cracks, but there's a dead mouse sample of him speaking in that song. That's Here's amazing. My cat. <laughs> <laughs> a, ni a nice, a nice little tidbit there, you know. Um, so, you know, obviously, your guys' paths crossed because of, because of Mousetrap. Yeah. So, can you share like how you first connected with each other and decided you wanted to start making music together? Yeah. Um, how did we first connect? I think. Wait, did you play the Palladium? I did. You did. You did. So that's how this kind of happened. So I was doing a, a show with. Um, Dead Mouse at the Palladium. Uh, I think, I believe it was four of them. Actually, it was four nights. 
and it was in 2019 and Julian opened was one of the open openers for that specific show but we didn't meet that day I think we connected after um, through Instagram you probably remember this better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's something like that. Like we we met initially at the show. We connected on Instagram, shared some DMs. I think we did. I, I could not tell you to be honest with you. Was, I know there were four nights of that. That was what facilitated show, so. the follow or something or like yeah. the initial conversation. Yeah, so um, yeah, I played one of the Palladium nights here in LA. He did like four nights or something. It's crazy, um, and. Yeah, we connected over that, and then you sent me some old demos that you had, and yeah. I got to work uh, working on some of them, and one of them ended up being Revolver. Yeah. yeah. And we sort of, I think we met up for coffee or tea, and then we were just like, we should, you know, do yeah. something and see if we can figure out, you know, a way to collaborate and, and see if our styles mesh, and I think we just sent... I think it was actually one of the first vocals I sent you, and you were like, oh, I think this actually makes sense with something I already have in the works, yeah. and it just sort of organically just made sense and here we are now <laughs> talking about it yeah i mean to put it in perspective this was like 2018 or like early 2019 yeah i think so um and yeah i i had a track laying around you had sent me a vocal it happened to be in the same key or something yeah. and and it just worked out of the box you know you don't run into collaborations like that often but um here we are i think the song's been relatively unchanged since since we initially finished it uh like yeah. a year or two ago yeah. and um i was telling her like recently i was doing the extended mix for djs and i was like this is kind of sacrilegious changing uh, the dna of the song this this far on yeah that's actually really interesting because like i feel when i talk to many other artists that are you know collaborating with others especially vocalists uh the there's this sense of like Sometimes the song is built specifically for the vocals. Sometimes the vocals just come way later. So for you guys to both have two separate, you know, ideas that just ended up marrying perfectly, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it doesn't happen too often. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, one of the things that really stood out to me about the track uh, was the punchy electro vibe that you brought along with the production, Julian. You know, the, it's very... Yeah very reminiscent of that like 2010 sound yeah uh, yeah that, that i i really love i know you really love totally uh, um and yeah i mean i i i've been going on this like trance thing for the past like year or two and and this song is in a way like a return to my original roots of of electro house where i where i grew up and really found my favorite genres you know um dead mouse sophie needs a ladder type of stuff i think that might have influenced the like direction a little bit um but yeah <laughs> it's definitely a return to form for me and um that was kind of the intention we wanted to do something that was kind of retro sounding but still fresh and and reflected what both of us are doing right now yeah and you know i think that overall that retro electro sound it's kind of weird to call i was just gonna say it's it so strange to hear you ago. say it's retro, was that? <laughs> but it totally is. I mean, yeah, it's been a long yeah, time. Yeah, it, it's weird, right? Like it's it's retro, but it to me it feels like yesterday. So I don't I don't know, but uh, I I really love that sound specifically. But I think that right now in the scene that's been bubbling up a lot more. Uh, you know, obviously there's some other artists as well who are really championing electro at the moment. Yeah, you know, what are your guys' general thoughts on the return of that style of dance music? I mean, for me, it's you just touched on it. The fact that it's called retro and that it's making a comeback is almost like odd because to me, it hasn't been gone because you know I grew up in it and and that was kind of that like the vibe that I was writing. You're especially, in I was in wave. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was I was so engulfed in it. But yeah, it's to me, it's very refreshing and very exciting to see you know these younger artists come through with that sort of sound and, and say that they've been inspired by it. And, you know, Julian said that, and I, I just did a collab too with Eddie and who's also one of your good friends as well. Yeah. And he's very much into that nostalgic feel. Um, I think it's exciting because you guys are putting a fresh take on it yeah. at the same time and almost like refining what had started back then. You know what I mean? Right. Um, to me, it's fun. It's nostalgic. It feels warm. You know, it's it's very exciting, and I love being part of it. 
Yeah, totally. I mean, I reflect a lot of what she's just said. I, I think it's exciting because there's this new resurgence of a lot of us that grew up with the original sound, but also influenced by a lot of the stuff in between. And we, we basically are trying to recreate something in our mind, but really we're, we're tainted by the other inspirations we've found over the years. And it kind of lends itself to this new and fresh take on the genre. Um, I see myself more in the progressive lane than I do electro house, but this song kind of is a, a fusion of a lot of those things. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. It, it's just been, it's been very awesome to see uh, artists who have been influenced by that genre uh, really kind of make it their own. Like you just said, you're more on the progressive house side of things, uh, even a little bit more trancy. Yeah. It's become going that. back earlier yeah. in the conversation. <laughs> Uh, but but it's it's your progresso sound, you know, that that I think is, is really cool and it shows off like your range of who inspired you the most over the years too. Totally. Um uh, beyond beyond like the actual music side, you know, Sophie, your vocal performance on this track is fantastic. Uh Thank you so much. You know, it's filled with energy, the lyrics pack their own punch. Where did you get the like where did like putting yourself and put put the listeners in your shoes like where did these lyrics come from oh my gosh well we are going back in time um because in true retro fashion as we mentioned before uh this was an older vocal that i had laying around um so it's kind of funny that it actually ended up being on a you know futuristic retro track in a way um it's very meta very full circle i guess um i mean the lyrics are not you know cryptic whatsoever it's very much on the nose and it tells a story um of basically watching a really good friend fall into a situation that is incredibly unhealthy and you're trying to pull them out of it um you know any sort of relationship or friendship and um basically you know telling them that you know what's going on here but you have to allow them to make their own mistakes and still kind of be a good friend and and you know stick around but at the same time going hey if you need the truth i'm right here (laughs) (laughs) no pun intended um and at the same time making it sort of you know not as depressing and fun to dance to without overthinking or or having to overthink while you're listening um so it's not i I can't say that it's like the deepest song ever in that sense you know what i mean and and that's intentional i wanted it to be lighthearted and fun so people can bop to it it, it kind of conveys yeah. that like 2011 like dance kind of sound nice. yeah, yeah. Uh, like pop music yeah. of the era was very much like it could be a heavier subject matter but it's still like yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. that's also awesome, though because it is it is very like in your face you know like here i tend to do that <laughs> here's here's what's going on <laughs> <laughs> i tend to so, do that <laughs> hey that's that's exactly what i think marries really well with ele- the electro sound to begin with so i think that that's that's what really made this track like stand out cool. uh you guys also produced a music video for the track as well i think that that added a lot of extra depth because the camera work and the color washes and the even like the the setting which was you know fairly basic like setting wise but mm. everything about that music video makes the track pop even more so what was the production process like on the music video? Um, I mean, originally, I want to kind of touch on what you just said with the colors, too, because we were very specific. And I think we both had the color palette totally. in, you know, we were inspired by that immediately. And yeah. we both knew what the what the song, what the colors were for the song. For some reason, we were just on the same page. So we kind of started with that in mind. Um, and then we also cinematically wanted to show um, off the lyrics. I mean, there's, you know, very much on the nose that ha- the way it happens, you see a lot of spinning motions, things like that, um, that connects to the lyrics of spinning you around. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll, I'll let you touch on the production side of it. Yeah. I, I, again, like I was mentioning in the beginning of this call, um, I've got that background in music and production and lighting design and stuff. So I, I really like flexed my muscles in that front on this video. I, did all the lighting design and the synchronizing of the of the screen and all of that um, in house. Um, so basically, I put together this really cool like demo of, of like what it would look like, and um, I basically laid out all the lights in our in my 
loft here and um we figured it out uh ahead of time we went in there with like not too much time in the space and um miraculously we we landed a music video um i think a lot of that is due to josh's like sheer pushing us through the the process i think yeah you want to speak on that um yeah so josh who (laughs) is really not a um DP normally in his life, but uh, yeah. you know he he tends to make really good dubstep music as as a zomboy. Um, but it really helped us out a lot, and he's he's been dabbling a lot um, in working uh, with camera work and um, doing uh, directing and, and making his own visuals as well. And um, since we were just kind of like coming out of the pandemic, you know, we all acquired all these new skills that we wanted to put together, and it was just a bunch of friends really getting together and creating something and and um, it was a great time yeah, yeah it was a fun time so i'm <laughs> grateful that it turned out really really well and um yeah i mean julian really ran the the technical side of things and i did more of like the styling and things yeah. like that so we we both got to flex our muscles here oh, totally. with with what comes natural to us and what you know our back backgrounds are in that sense yeah totally um, so don't don't underestimate what Sophie did on this project too. She added so much cool creativity, and um, we couldn't have had the vision that we had without her input. Thank you. Eh. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could high five you guys too. <laughs> um, so so <laughs> so now that uh, Revolver has been released in the world, what's next? You know, are, are there more? collaborations you guys might be working on uh is you know can we expect to maybe see it get played live at a show in the future all of these things are being worked on um i don't have anything to announce today but um you know those are all things that are going through our minds i think yeah i mean i can uh, yeah it's it's the same for me we're we're definitely working on things and and hopefully we'll get to uh play this track out live soon and You'll be the first to know, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll make sure to be there for sure. Yes, please. And and then, you know, finally, I, I love to end interviews like on a very uplifting note. Um, you know, if there's like some words of encouragement that you could offer other artists in the scene who might be struggling right now, what would they be? Mm. Mm, this is some advice I need to be given myself, too. So this is this is good. Um <laughs> putting you on the spot <laughs> yeah no, no this is good though because i think that we all go through similar things to be honest no matter where you are in your career um i think one of the things that i've learned over the past months even is just put things into action like don't overthink things don't think they're um don't think don't don't sit there thinking about doing something, just just start it. I think I found that for myself that makes me feel better and it creates opportunity versus just sometimes feeling crippled by the amount of things that you have to get done, you know? Um, so I guess one w- word would be that's inspiring to me. It's like, get into action, yeah. just do it. Wow, somebody else said just do it before, it. didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, what Sophie said is 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 very true. Um, I think that my 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 only advice is to stay creative and and be very true to like what really got you into what it is you're doing, whether that's music or video or painting or drawing or what have you. Think about like why you fell in love with it in the first place, and and try to channel that if you're running into periods of doubt or like focusing on the numbers of social media or what have you every career has ups and downs and um you know you never know your next piece might be the best piece you've ever done so uh just channel what it is that really made you fall in love with the the process and um you'll be all right those are great those are both great answers right there so thanks (laughs) i know i'm not supposed to interview you but now i'm curious what would you say what would what advice would you give people I think that like I would kind of echo a little bit of both of what you guys said. I I think that what it comes down to is is staying true to who you are uh, as a creative person, but then also, you know, setting proper boundaries Mm. so that you're able to to reset and be able to, uh, you know, have the energy 
to be able to do the creative things. It's like actually something I struggle with a lot and I, I'm giving advice that I don't take myself. I mean, um, we all do but, that. But, you know, taking on too much, too many projects or stuff like that can, you know, it's great to have as many opportunities as possible. You also have to protect, you know, your time and, and yeah. the way that you invest it into different people, different projects. So, um, you know, I, I always think that, I guess maybe like the biggest advice would be, you know, don't be too hard on yourself uh, if you can't do everything, mm, you know? Yeah, so. that's a good one. That's a good one. And, and I like that you touched on, you know, basically you've got to live life too. Yeah. you got to yeah, do other exactly. things in order to be creatively charged and, and feel good about yourself and, and be able to then channel that in a, in a true way without wanting to do everything at the same time. So, yeah, yeah that's it, good advice. It's very, it's very difficult because there's so many things happening, especially in the dance music scene mm -hmm. where, you know, you see everybody complaining about having FOMO and stuff. And you just get to a point where you're like, OK, maybe I don't need to be at every single festival yeah. that happens. Yeah, there's a lot. Well, there's, that's a, it's a I difficult remember when thing there was not nearly as many. So it's, it was a different era back then. It was. It was super different. And we also, I mean, now we're getting into a whole other conversation, but like we weren't, you know, so influenced by social media. So we weren't seeing everything at the same time. Like there wasn't so much influx of information. We, we actually had more of the opportunity to be in it without worrying about what other people are doing so much and, and comparing and going, oh, I need to be doing this and I need to put out a TikTok and I need to be doing this as well. And it was a lot more chill in that sense. So I think that adds to a lot of anxiety too and, and feeling like you're missing out and you should be doing more and more and more. And it's just a right. never ending cycle of more and more and more. Yeah. It's, it's like, <laughs> I, I, it's kind of impossible to do everything, you know, yeah. like there's so there's a new social media every day. And for the longest time I thought like, I'm going to be on everything. I'm going to post yeah. all the time, but now I'm realizing like, Whoa, take it slow and just try to, do something actually important on any of the given platforms and people will care more than like being very passive on everything, you right. know? Yeah. I feel like we also felt that throughout this release cause we've done everything ourselves, you know, from creating the song, creating the video. I mean, it's, it's been, it's been a lot. It's been a lot of work and it is a lot of work and it's, it's, you sometimes have to take a break from it and go, okay, wait, where are we at? Let's reorganize. So it's very exciting to put it out. So exciting! Yay! Low, low key, I've been I've been waiting for it. I remember I remember what Julian you texted me and you said, "Hey, I want you to check this song out. I think you're gonna like it." And uh, I fell in love with it. I, mean, oh. I think I listened to it like 15 times in a row. Oh, I the love first that! Night Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that means a lot. Thank you so much, Julian, Sophie. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to chat with us. Thanks so uh, much, Grant. Know, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And thanks for the support. Go stream Revolver. <laughs> and yeah, definitely go stream Revolver. Bye. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Hey, hey, hey.